couch dogs need the lesson Hey there, Lincoln Riffers, how are you doing? I'm Asaf Levavi and I welcome you to lesson number eight in Finally Understanding Chords, the 10 Lesson Chord Theory Masterclass course right here on Lincoln Riff, in which I give away all of the guitar next secrets and methodology about guitar chords. Very in depth, so if you haven't watched the previous lessons, including the introduction, I strongly suggest you take a break from this lesson right now before we delve into jazz chords. Um, because you'll need to know uh, what I taught there, including this, the embellishment table. Okay, if this means nothing to you, then uh, by all means go watch the introduction and get what this is because we're gonna discuss a lot of this in this lesson. Okay, nothing will make sense if you don't, um, if you don't get the table below. Okay, so... Um, We've been discussing everything from simple minor and major chords to embellishments and to the caged method. Now, in the caged method, remember where I gave you the shortcut where if you have a bass note on the fifth string, let's say this, okay, E flat, then in front of it you have the A shape and behind it you have the C shape, okay, C and A, both shapes that share one bass note. Um, this is going to be the basis to everything I'm going to show you, um, so get ready. There's no easy way to explain jazz chords, it's a very convoluted system, but I'm going to try my best and uh, we're only going to discuss why the chords look the way they do, how to find the chords themselves and how to understand what's going on when you see a jazz chord with all those numbers. Okay, we've already gone through a little bit of uh, complex harmony throughout the lessons, but this is going to focus around jazz chords, uh, chords like this, or like this, okay, and uh, all sorts of, sorts of, all sorts of harmonies, the, okay, this chord, everything you can think of in terms of jazzy chords. Now, what gives those jazzy chords their sound? Um, strictly speaking, uh, no repetition. Usually in a jazz chord, you're looking for individual notes without any octaves of notes repeating themselves. For example, in C, you have C and C, you have E and E. In E, you have, uh, in all its derivatives, okay, you have uh, three notes, uh, just octaves apart. Okay? There's no such thing in jazz chord theory. Um, and that's why they sound so neat in such uh, a blocky kind of way. So, um, the C shape, which is our basis. Okay, let's uh, start here with um, C on, um, on 5, 6, and 7, which is this. It's E. Okay? And uh, we've already discussed C7. And okay, now 7 the dominant seven, okay, a major chord with a minor seven, remember lesson number um, two, I think, um, a seventh note, a dominant seventh note, that's the basis for everything in jazz. You build on that. For example, if you have a ninth chord, a dominant ninth chord, then you have the seventh in there and the ninth in there. So let's build that chord. Okay, remember this is C. So we have the one, the three, instead of the five, now we have seven. So then we have eight. And if this is eight, so eight, flat nine, nine. And this is dominant nine. Okay, now the interesting thing here is what happens when you take the nine up a fret. Okay, this is supposed to be the minor third, but we're playing a major chord. And this is where things get a bit uh, convoluted, as I said before. We're playing a major chord. Remember, this is the major third. So why, uh, do, why do we play the minor third? The thing is, we don't call it a minor third. Because we're playing a major chord, this becomes a sharp nine. So if this is nine, then this is sharp nine. And this is a really cool chord. So um, this is a sharp nine chord. Now, uh, if we keep on going 
and we take this back into nine and move the seven around. If we take the minor seven, this is a minor seven, remember it's a minor seven on a major chord, and we take this up to a major seven, and we still have the nine, we get this chord, okay? A major seven add nine chord, or a jazz major seven chord. Now, uh, if we would have taken the seven uh, down half a step to six, then uh, remember C6, we discussed that in uh, lesson number um, three, I think. Um, and if we add the ninth to that, we get this. This is a really, really nice chord. So as you see, jazz chords have explanations. They don't look that way just because somebody decided. Um, you just, most of the time, have a seventh uh, in there or just a couple of embellishments that sound good. So here we don't have a seven, we have a six, but we also have the nine. So uh, we get two extra embellishments. And uh, if we take this uh, down physically, then we have to compensate for the second uh, string, remember? And we take this up and we get this. So um, look at this shape, looks familiar? If we take it back up, a string, up physically I mean, we get the ninth chord, dominant ninth. So here it's a sixth chord with an add nine, and here it's a ninth chord. So uh, you get two uh, for the price of one, just depending on which string you put it on. So all it takes is a bit of attention and concentration. So let's uh, discuss other types of chords. Uh, for example, the 6th chord or the 13th chord. This is A, right? And if we make this A7, then we get this, right? So uh, let's uh, isolate a couple of notes. The bass note, the 7th, and the 3rd, okay? No 5th. This is why the jazz 7th chord looks like this. Okay, they just chose the one, the three, and the seven instead of one, five, three, which is a normal chord. Now, what about the 13? Remember, six is 13. We've been talking about this from the start. Two is nine, four is 11, six is 13. So we have five over here, remember? We have one, five, eight, three, five. So five, sharp five, six. So if we take this and add the 6, we get a 13 chord because we already have the 7, so the 13 is already in the next octave, so I mean the 6 is in the next octave, so this becomes 13. Okay, again, if you think I'm going too fast, that's because you haven't watched the previous lessons. Okay, you're supposed to know what I'm talking about. So um, this becomes 13. What happens if we take the 13 down a half step? We get flat 13. That simple. 13, flat 13. Now, a uh, flat 13 chord is a um, very uh, close relative of the augmented chord. It's kind of a jazz augmented chord. So some people call the flat 13 an augmented chord or an augmented seven chord uh, because you get this and okay, this is the augmented sound here and in this chord it's just a substitution for it so the flat 13 is a relative of the augmented chord can you hear the similarities okay now uh, this is 13 but what if we want uh, a higher 13? Then let's uh, search the A shape where we last saw a sixth uh, addition. Um, a shape right here. This is E. And if we want to add six, then we take five, sharp five, six. And this is this. But this has nothing to do with jazz. This is just E6. Even if you do this, Okay, which is seven and a six, this becomes more jazzy, okay? especially if you play it like 
this, but um, it's more sophisticated than a basic chord. So uh, the basic chord that I'm talking about is this. This is the basic 13th chord in jazz. Why? I have no idea. Actually, this one sounds a lot more, um, you know, a lot more uh, basic than the previous one. But actually, if you look at it, you'll see that there's a very good reason. Because remember this, the 7th, the 9th. Now, if you just lay your finger down, you get this. This is a 9th chord with an extra 5th. And this is the 6th, stolen from the next position. This is the C position, and this is from the A position. Okay, so... Okay? I hope this makes sense. If not, look at it again. Try to build it from C. C, you have the 1, the 3, and then you have the 5. So 5, 6, 7, you have the 7. Here you have the 8. 8, sharp... Uh, sharp eight, flat nine, nine, okay? By the way, if you want a flat nine chord, then you just play this, the flat nine, okay? You have the seventh, and you play the flat nine. And um, let's go back to nine. Now, uh, if we look at the next position, the A position, then we have the sixth over here. So we just add it to this chord to create no duplication of notes and that's basically what's happening around here now um, let's see what we can do with what I showed you with half chords before um, remember the let's take G don't think we've touched G anywhere uh, in the last few lessons so G and um, let's just uh, start from 7 Okay? And we can just play the upper half of the chord, okay, from here, with the 7, okay, with the 7th note. So, this in itself is way more jazzy than this. So, now we can use uh, this finger for the 13, okay? Okay, this is the 6, okay? Nothing fancy about it. It's just 5, sharp 5, 6. Okay, we've learned this in the third lesson. So uh, you just take half a chord and have a 13th. We can also build up and stack up the embellishments and add the ninth here. So we have this. Why? Again, because if this is G and we have the eight on the E string, so eight, flat nine, nine, and then we have this. And this is a common jazz chord. Now, what about uh, chords like this one? This is kind of a quartal harmony. It's all fourths. This is a fourth, this is a fourth, and this is a fourth. And if you want to know what's in there, then take a look. Uh, let's take it uh, up a string for a second just to show you what's going on. Okay? This is kind of like the C chord, right? The C shaped chord, but with the major third up to the fourth. So now we call it add 11, as we've discussed previously in the uh, course. So uh, now we have this, which is also a really, really nice chord. This is, okay, this has the, if we play strings two, three, four, and five, we have the root, we have the 11, we have the 7, and we have the 9. Then it's enough to just toy around with it and see how jazzy it is. So, uh, yeah, just barring the fret. Okay? And if we add this note, then we get the minor note. That's basically all there is to it. It's the minor note. If this is the root, this is the minor note, right? Because of the A shape. Okay, don't uh, stray away from the basic shapes. The basic shapes dominate everything. So it's a minor seven and 11, okay? And if we take it back up, we compensate for uh, uh, up musically, down physically. This is always confusing. 
um, we need to compensate for it. The second string, so we have this, or we just double bar it. And there we have a really interesting jazz chord. Okay, seems really weird when you just uh, see it without understanding where it comes from, but now that you understand where it comes from, it's really nice, isn't it? And the same goes for this chord. Okay, you can just let go of the bass note and just play it like this. And if you let go, you get a minor seven flat five chord. So this is a sixth chord, okay? This is E6, just without any bass note. But this is uh, G sharp minor seven flat five, because this is G sharp, this is the octave, and this is the chord. And we've learned this chord in the diminished and augmented lesson. So uh, I hope you start seeing that everything is just uh, stacking embellishments in an interesting way. Uh, that's basically all there is to it. So for example, if we uh, take this chord, it's a minor seven flat five chord, a half diminished chord. But what if we decide that this is a B chord? Then suddenly it becomes a ninth chord because if the bass is here for B, then listen to it now. Suddenly it sounds very bluesy. Suddenly there's no uh, weirdness about it. Um, so it's a ninth chord without the bass note. Okay, why? Because one, three, seven, nine, five. Okay, just without the bass note. And this is the idea behind jazz chords. And I know this takes a lot of time to get used to, this takes a lot of practice, so just watch this lesson over and over again if you need to. And um, the, the final uh, chord that I wanna touch is uh, this chord, okay, this shape. Um, and even this shape. Really, really cool. It's a beautiful chord. Or, okay, it has this really weird second in there, but you learn to love those. So, what's going on over here? Um, if you play this, let's take B minor, and we just play strings two, three, and six, we get this. And um, the note on the E string when we bar the chord is the root, the 8, remember? So if we take it down, instead of toying around with it and playing upwards in the frets, and we take it down, we get the major 7 and the minor 7. So we can get this as a minor 7 chord. And if we want the major note, then this note becomes a major 3rd because... Okay, that's where it is in the chord. So this is a seventh chord, and this is a major seven chord. Once again, because eight, major seven, seven. So if we have a major chord, okay, then this would be the major seven, this would be the, um, the seventh, okay? A major chord with a seventh note, a minor seventh, a dominant seventh chord. And if it's a minor chord, then minor seven and minor major seven. Okay. Um, and if we take this here, okay, and we play a okay, strings three, four, and six, then we get this, which is a minor seven. Okay, it's minor seven. Okay, it's just these notes, and we play this. Then uh, this is the fourth note because five, okay? Remember, this is the fifth. So this is the flat five, and this is the four. So this is the fourth note. And remember what I told you about fourth notes? Up an octave, and when they're not in a suspended fourth chord, are called 11. So this is minor seven at 11. I love the sound of this chord. And you also have major seven and 11. 
okay? This is a really cool chord, okay? And you can have it here, okay? The same shape, but this is now minor because we need to raise the, uh, the um, finger on the second string if we want to keep it major, so now it's minor. But listen to this, okay? Minor at 11, minor seven at 11. Okay, this is a really cool chord. This is a flat five, so um, this is the add eleven. This is the flat five. This is the minor flat five. And now we kind of close a circle because I showed you this when I talked about alternated bass notes. I showed it here. I showed it as a minor over F sharp. And now you see why this is a minor seven flat five chord. I promised you I would. And didn't show it in the minor 7 flat 5 diminished augmented lesson because I wanted to show you this in the jazz chord lesson. Okay, um, A minor over F sharp, this makes for an F sharp minor 7 flat 5 and now you know why. So let's take it here. And this would be the ending of this lesson. Uh, the next lesson, we're going to go crazy. So, 1, 7, minor 3rd flat 5. 5, flat 5. And you can have this chord as well. Uh, it's major flat 5. So it's 7 flat 5. B7 flat 5. So just toy around with those and try to recognize what you're playing. Try to uh, download a chart for a jazz song and just try to see if you can find the chords without looking at the... Um, the diagrams. Uh, the more you try, the better you'll get at it. So um, again, if I went too fast for you, I apologize. But again, watch the entire course and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So um, I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Have fun.